what's up, Internet friends? This is Dave DeWitt. Welcome to Midnight Muse Studios and part three of my Midsummer's Daydream guitar lesson. In part three, we're going to head into the tenth interval section. So what I mean by that, um, I'll show you the, the interval of a tenth on the shapes uh, for the minor and the major tenths. And once you have that down uh, with the root note on the fifth string, this section will flow pretty easily. So let's start with that. So we'll start um, just for illustration purposes on the fifth fret of the A string. Put your second finger down on the fifth fret. That's, that's your root, so that's a D. Now take your, your ring finger, put it on the seventh fret of the B string. That's a third above D. That's an interval of a major third. So from the low D to that note there, which is your F sharp, which is your major third, that's actually an octave plus a major third, which is a major tenth. So that shape right there is a major tenth interval, and it's movable. You can move it all the way up and down the fretboard. Major tenth. If you take that major third, the F sharp, and you drop it down a half a step to the F, so root note on the 5th fret of the A string, now you're on the 6th fret of the B string on your F. That is a minor 10th. What you have there is an octave plus a minor 3rd. So that shape right there is also movable. You can move it up and down. There's your minor 10th. So you take those two different shapes and we'll, we'll start up here with a major 10th starting on the 10th fret of the A string, your root there. All right, there's your major 10th. Now, in between every one of these intervals that you're going to pluck, you're going to actually use your second finger of your right hand to pluck your open D, uh, sorry, open G string. Like that. So now slide your major 10th up with your root on the 12th fret of the A string. Still play the open G between, so. Now go up to your 14th fret A root and play a minor 10th. Okay, so you got major 10th, open G, major 10th, open G, minor 10th on the 14th fret, open G. Sounds like this. So starting on the 14th fret, the minor 10th, you go into a descending pattern. You're going to pluck your, your minor 10th interval, your open G string, and then the, you're going to pluck the minor, uh, the minor third on top um, with your, so pluck with your middle finger of your right hand the, the note on the B string. do that and descend changing the patterns like this so minor minor tenth 12th fret root major tenth 10th fret root major tenth 9th fret root minor tenth and then we need to the seventh fret root you're gonna do your minor tenth and the pattern changes a little bit right here. It's a little, um, it's just to fit it in. The way the pattern changes is it goes, pluck your minor 10th, your open G, right to your uh, next one down, which is a major 10th on the fifth fret. So. So you don't do your, you don't go back to your, your B string. Like that, you skip the B string. Then you go to your minor 10th on the 4th fret root of the 5th string. And you're back to the pattern where you go back to the B string now. So there's your B string right there. Minor 10th on the 2nd fret of the 5th string root. Back to the B string there too. And then you're going to do a major 10th. The last one is an open A string on the bottom. 
your fifth string, open A, and you're on the second fret of the B string. So one more thing to mention about the entire uh, part there, um, the entire run, starting from the 10th fret major all the way up to, and as you descend. Um, so there's an opportunity here, and I think Rick Emmett does it really, really well in the recording, um, to, to bring some dynamics into this, which makes it, you know, uh, once you get the part down and you have the notes down, um, you know, part of part of performance is including dynamics here and phrasing and everything. So, um, in my opinion, this you know this is a key part of the song. The build here is you're going to start it a little bit soft, and again, it's this is advanced, so you've got to have the part down first. But you're going to start it a little bit softer as you descend and play your. stronger and stronger and build into that run at the end that's really powerful until you're coming out of it and you're you're powerful there so the crescendo you know gradually increasing your volume there uh, to me is key in terms of performing this piece um, it, be careful not to as you're increasing your volume don't increase your speed too much you want to keep your speed steady as much as possible the, the temptation there is to play louder and faster and it ends up being, you know, a train wreck at the end. So keep the speed steady, um, you know, keep that internal metronome going and try to keep your speed really rock steady, but, but soft to loud there and make it really powerful at the end. From there, the run. So your second fret B string with your uh, pointer finger. You're gonna hammer on to the third fret, to the fifth fret, then you're going to pull off from the 5th fret to the 3rd fret to the 2nd fret, and then to the open B string, so like this. Then you're going to hammer on back to the 2nd fret, fret, fret of the B string. Back open again. Second fret of the G string. 4th fret G string hammer on, pull off back to the 2nd fret, open G string, back to the 2nd fret G string, pull off again to the open G string. down to the D string, 4th fret. I play this with my middle finger. Uh, you can do it with your ring finger too and use your pinky for the next note, but I usually do my middle finger. So, right there you're on the 4th fret, middle finger. Hammer on to the 5th fret with your ring finger. Pull back off to the 4th fret. Pull off to the 2nd fret. And to end this run, kind of a little flourish, you hear people play this differently, um, different videos, but the way I play the end of it is I do, uh, I repeat a, a pattern twice, um, once on the D string and once on the A string, once on the four and once on five. So the pattern is you start on the second fret with your pointer finger, hammer on to the fourth fret, pull off back to the second fret really fast, like that and pull off to the open string, like that. And same thing then on the fifth string, A, so, like that. So the run, again, you got your open A string on the bottom, and you're starting on the second fret of the B string. And then you hit the low D to end the run. One more time. So that D, that uh, open D on the on the bass string there leads you right back into the part that we learned in part two, which is this. Mm -hmm. 